Hello and welcome back to Coco Sleep, a podcast of original children's bedtime stories and meditations designed to make bedtime a dream. Where's your favourite place to sing? In bed? In the kitchen? In the car? Hmm. Well, whilst you think about it, I'm going to quickly give a big warm welcome to our newest members of the Coco Club. Listen out for your name and know we're giving you the biggest high fives and hugs of thanks for coming on board. Hi, Aria and Kira, Norris, Elowin and Bishop, Eleanor, Clara and Abby, Emlyn, RJ Davis and Emma Davis, Liliana and Isla. Welcome all of you and enjoy all the extra stories and adventures you've now got coming your way. So back to the singing question. Personally, I think I sound best in the shower. And maybe tonight's story will go some way to explaining why. For soon we're going to meet another creature who loves to sing. Not a human or a bird, but a mammal whose song is famous for being relaxing and soothing. Can you think which animal it might be? They usually live underwater, but tonight we're heading to meet our star in the hustle and bustle of New Orleans, a bustling town in the swamps of Louisiana. We're soon going to meet a certain young whale who has a dream. He wants to sing jazz. And what better place to do it than in this magical musical metropolis? There's just one problem. It turns out his singing doesn't sound so great out of the water. I know the feeling. Well, let's hear about what happens when a band of cool cats take him under their wing. Lie back, relax and get comfy. Whilst I begin Wailing Duke and the Cool Cats by Susanna McLaughlin. There was once a whale born in the sea near Sleepy Forest. His mum named him Duke after her favourite jazz pianist. It seemed that music flowed through his fins as Duke grew up to be a groover himself, although he couldn't play a note of piano. He was known as Wailing Duke on account of his singing. His wailing song echoed through the ocean and he often found himself surrounded by castanet-tapping crabs and drumming crawfish, trumpet-blowing pufferfish and humming minnows. Duke had always dreamed of leaving the ocean to try his luck in the capital city of jazz, New Orleans. And everybody supported his dream, his mum especially. She had taught him everything he knew about jazz, In their favourite nook of the cove, you could find her record player and stacks of records so high they almost popped out above the waves. The two whales would relax on fluffy anemones and sea sponge sofas and get lost in the plonk of the piano and the croons of the saxophone. She taught him about Nina Simone and Billie Holiday, Louis Armstrong and Thelonious Monk. And she told him about New Orleans, a small town in the USA where ornate buildings grew from swamplands and music filled the streets. She said that it had been home to the jazziest cats of all time. Duke was confused at first. It's a town of cats? he asked. No, silly, his mum replied. There's all sorts of animals there. But cats is what they sometimes call each other. You're a cool cat too, Duke. Duke laughed, looking at his fins and tail. He thought he was definitely a whale, but he guessed he could be a cool cat too. When the day came, Duke began his swim to the shore. He swam to the beach, stood up on his tail and waded into the sand. He was a bit wobbly on his fins at first, but soon got used to being on land. He practised a little boogie. Dancing may take a little more practice, he thought. Duke headed towards the faint sound of music, which drifted from the town. He headed through narrow streets, and as the music got louder, 
more neon signs began to blink and glow over his head. Soon, the streets were bustling. Between buildings with ornate iron railings and painted shutters, under hanging flower baskets, people made music on every corner. The town had a constant soundtrack of crooners and musicians, playing songs just like Duke heard on the records, and some that were unlike anything he'd ever heard at all. Duke headed to the guest house where he was welcomed by a friendly gator named Agnes, who had a puffy bonnet on her head and diamante studded glasses on her snout. She breezed around in long cotton dresses and shawls, humming as she went. Agnes was quite the star back in her day, selling out every concert having animals crowd into small, dark jazz venues just to hear her voice. Now, her voice was a little croaky, but she said she didn't mind. Now, she much preferred to listen to music, sipping an iced tea in a comfy chair near the waterside. But, singer or not, her passion was as alive as ever and the guest house was lined with stacks of records. It made Duke immediately feel at home. The other resident of the guest house was a bear named Gumbo, who had come to New Orleans from the mountains with dreams of being a chef, having lived in the swamplands for years, having recipes passed down to him by his family. He claimed to have the best jambalaya in the whole of New Orleans, but the competition was tough. Gumbo and Duke became fast friends, both happy to have another by their side on the start of their journey to stardom. On Duke's first night in New Orleans, Gumbo fried up a whole plate each of beignets, sweet doughnuts covered in clouds of sugar. Duke thought they were one of the best things he had ever tasted. He turned to Gumbo and said that he was sure Gumbo would one day own the most famous restaurant in the city. Gumbo had shared his talent with Duke, and now he said he wanted to hear Duke's talent in turn. Duke was happy to oblige. Having overheard, Agnes soon waltzed in in a cloud of rosy perfume with a record in hand. It was her favourite jazz track, which, she said Wailing Duke would be a perfect addition to. She settled in a chair next to Gumbo and placed the needle onto the spinning record player. The sound of a saxophone reverberated through the room and lively piano and deep double bass soon joined in. Then Duke began to wail and all that came out was a slight honk. He tried again. Nothing but a weak, wheezing honk. Well, dear, that's very unique, Agnes said. Duke hurried to tell her that he didn't usually sound like this. He chuckled. I've never sung above water before, he said. He took in another deep breath and let out a wail once more. All of the air just flowed weakly out of his blowhole. Maybe wailing Duke could only wail underwater. Duke shrugged. Maybe he was destined to be a star of the sea, not the land. That was okay with him. Agnes told him that she knew some people who might help. They knew music better than anyone in the business. She doodled a map on the back of a card which led a couple of streets over. Ask for the cool cats, she said. Now, they aren't actually cats. That's just their band name. Duke nodded wisely. Anyone can be a cool cat in New Orleans, he said. Agnes smiled. Exactly, she said. Gumbo put on his fedora and said he would come along for the adventure. 
They were in this together now, the dreams coming true business. The whale and the bear headed out into the streets and were immediately washed in music. They applauded as they passed an octopus playing a drum kit whilst blowing on a harmonica and danced past a busy cafe packed with a brass band playing raucous swing music. Finally, they found themselves in front of a small venue with a wooden front. A neon sign in the shape of a saxophone swung above the door. Duke pushed open the door and led the way in. Immediately they were wrapped up in music. The rise and fall of the clarinet, the melody of the piano, and the whoops of the musicians. The music seemed to have no pattern or rules, with every instrument having turns as the star. At first, Gumbo and Duke were squinting in the darkness looking for its source. But suddenly, spotlights turned on to light up the stage. Duke looked up at the rafters where a bunny giggled and waved down at him from between the lights. Duke looked back to the stage to see the grooviest assortment of animals he'd ever seen. There was a warthog on the piano, tickling the notes from the bottom to the top. There was a tall tree frog with long legs, swinging the double bass around on its stand. There was a goat on the clarinet, a pelican on the guitar, and one other that caught Duke's attention above all, the skunk on the saxophone. The skunk had a flash of white hair poofing from his head that bobbed and swung as he played, as if part of the music. His fluffy tail swirled this way and that as he swiftly moved his paws over the keys, his cheeks round as he played soaring melodies, unlike anything Duke had heard before. His eyes were covered by his shades, and he wore a pinstripe blazer. He seemed lost in the music. Duke and Gumbo stood watching for a while, Mouths open until they were startled back into the room by the end of the song. After a moment of silence, the two animals began clapping their paws together enthusiastically. The skunk lowered his shades and looked towards them. Hey there, he said. I'm Swingin' Stew and these are the cool cats. What brings you two to our audience today? Duke felt a little nervous to be talking to a real jazz musician from New Orleans, but he swallowed, stood up on his tail, and replied, Hi, I'm Duke, and this is Gumbo. Agnes sent us. You guys are really something. That was amazing. I have a musical problem, you see. I'm a singer who's lost his voice. Agnes thought you might be able to help. Gumbo nodded encouragingly from his side. A singer? Without a voice? Stu said. Well, that just won't do. Come up here, Duke, and show us what you've got. Duke headed up the aisle towards the steps that led to the stage. All of the cool cats were smiling at him encouragingly. Stu said they would play their instruments and all Duke had to do was sing along. He counted down. Three, two, one, and they began to play. Duke closed his eyes felt the music fill him up and took in a big lungful of air. Then he let out his first note. If you could call it a note, anyway. The air just blew out of his blowhole, making hardly any noise at all. Duke sighed and smiled at Stu. I came all the way from the coast of Sleepy Forest to sing and have lost my voice. 
Stu took off his shades and looked at Duke. Sleepy forest, you say? He asked. I played a concert there. What a truly magical place. You're from the ocean, right? Stu asked. Duke nodded. Is this the first time you sung above water? Duke scratched his chin with his fin. He supposed it was. Everything is a little different underwater, Stu said. But let's try to find a solution. And hey, if it makes you feel better, none of us cool cats are very good singers either. The pelican called out, <laughs> especially me. And I have the biggest mouth of all of us. His bill opened wide as he laughed. Duke grinned. Let's try again, Stu instructed. After I count to three, you sing. A one, two, three. Duke let out a wail even feebler than the last. Stu scratched his little goatee. It seems all of the air is escaping from your blowhole, he said. I'll bet that doesn't happen when you're underwater. Duke shook his head. We'll just have to plug it up, the frog cried, rustling about in his bag. And I have just the thing. In his outstretched hand, he offered Duke a pink, fluffy marshmallow. Duke popped it in his blowhole, and Stu counted him in once more. One, two, three. Duke wailed, and something slightly more whale-like came out. It was still weak, and much less lively than Duke was usually capable of, but it was better than before. Gumbo and the band whooped and hollowed. Good job, Duke, the clarinet-playing goat said, patting him on the back. They were making progress. Now, I'm awfully sorry, Duke, but we have to go prepare for our concert, and the curtains are about to come up. But you practice and come back tomorrow. You'll be singing before you know it. Gumbo and Duke thanked the cool cats who told them to send their love to Agnes before heading back to their home. Duke was practically dancing through the streets. He was going to get his voice back, and he knew the best jazz band in the whole of New Orleans. Now that was something to celebrate. Gumbo cooked up some red beans and rice, a New Orleans delicacy, and the two of them ate, then danced around the guest house. Soon, Duke was exhausted. He thought he might want an early night. First thing first, Duke brushed his teeth. Then he hopped into the bath. He lathered up some soap into bubbly foam and covered his face with it. As he was scrubbing, he let the cool cat's music drift back into his head. He began to bob his head, then hum, then sing in his new, weak, squeaky way. He dunked his head into the water to wash off the soap. Immediately, his voice sang out with all of its former power. He sat up, startled. Duke heard Gumbo knock on the bathroom door. Was that you, Duke? Did you sing? he asked. Duke puffed up his chest with happiness. His voice wasn't lost at all. He had sung. All he needed was the water, just like at home. He ducked his head back under and sang once more. His smooth, jazzy voice was back. Gumbo cheered from outside of the door. Duke wrapped himself in a fluffy towel, then put on his dressing gown. 
He had a plan, and he would need Gumbo's help. He explained his plan to the friendly bear, and they soon started brainstorming. Duke needed some kind of contraption that would keep him underwater on land, and preferably one he could dance in, too. Before long, Gumbo was sketching on a rolled-out strip of baking paper. His design was genius. It was like a space helmet, but it would be filled with water. Duke would wear it on his head, and alongside his marshmallow blowhole blocker, he would be able to sing his heart out as if he was at the bottom of the ocean. Now for the hard part. They had to make it. They tried several things with no success. First, two mixing bowls taped together. This was watertight, but Duke wouldn't be able to see through it to know where he was going. Next, an upside-down vase. This was transparent, but when they flipped it over, the water fell out and drenched Duke and the carpet. Luckily, Agnes didn't mind their mischief. It was Agnes who came up with the final contraption. When she came in and saw the soggy carpet and Duke dancing around with the vase on his head, she thought she would have to step in. You need a fishbowl, sillies, she croaked. Luckily, she had the perfect one. It was a huge fishbowl, perfectly round and perfectly clear. Agnes explained that it used to belong to her friend Angie the angelfish before she moved out to go on a tropical vacation. She showed them a few photos of Angie floating in a bay in Bora Bora. Anyway, the bowl was fish-free and waiting for someone to find a use for it. Duke tried the bowl on. It was perfect. Agnes put on her favourite record and told Duke to sing. Duke was wailing Duke once more. His singing was even louder and more resonant than ever. It filled the room, and Agnes watched on in amazement. Take it from me, Duke, she said when he finished. You're a star. Duke hugged Agnes and Gumbo in glee. The next day, he would be able to show the cool cats what he was made of. The next afternoon, Duke and Gumbo headed back to the music hall, fishbowl in tow. The cool cats were chatting and tuning their instruments as they entered. They all called out a friendly hello to the two animals. Stew welcomed them and Gumbo settled in a plush chair as Duke went up on stage. Stu watched on bemused as Duke took the fishbowl from his bag and put it on his head, filled with water. The cool cats picked up their instruments, and Stu counted down at three, two, one. The double bass boinged into life and the clarinet began to sing. The piano plinked and plonked, and the saxophone started to warble. And soon, Duke began to wail. It was the most ethereal, moving sound, yet also it was cool and fresh. It turned the cool cat's music into a symphony. Gumbo's eyes were glittering in the front row. His friend was a star. When the song came to the end, Stu patted Duke on the back. You are indeed a cool cat, he said. Stu asked Duke to step off the stage for a moment whilst he talked to the band. Duke sat down next to Gumbo who squeezed him in a hug and told him he was so very proud of him. Soon the band turned back to the duo. Duke, 
Would you like to be one of the cool cats? Stu asked. Stu couldn't believe it. His tummy did somersaults, as did the butterflies that suddenly lived there. He smiled politely and said simply, Yes, please. And that is the story of how Whale Song came to be known by the world. Wailing Duke joined the cool cats and toured the world with them, spreading their music far and wide. Most of the time, they were in New Orleans playing at their new favourite spot, Gumbo's, a new restaurant run by a very talented bear. But often, they found themselves back at Duke's home, on the beach by Sleepy Forest. Unfortunately, unlike Duke, the rest of the band didn't sound better underwater, so they had to play on the sand. But Duke's family and friends would poke their head above the water and listen to the smooth sound of his voice until the sun went down.